Whew. <sighs> Thanks for the pizza break, Ray. You know, I don't even mind working late when there's pizza involved. Yeah, I am so stuffed. Me too. I couldn't eat another slice. Me neither. <laughs> Good thing, because there's only one slice left. One, one slice? slice. Our Connect HQ. Every day we help the people of the world live God's way. We look for the links, make the connection, and you never know what might happen. My name is Edison, and this is the time we learn that sometimes it takes courage to do what's right. Hey, would you guys want to go out to eat for lunch today? Sure. What would you guys like to eat? How about pizza? Sounds good. Pizza? Again? We just had it two nights ago. So? It's a scientific fact that you can never have too much pizza. Would you guys like to go to the same place that we went last time? Little Pizza My Heart? How about we go someplace new this time? But why? Little Pizza My Heart is amazing, and they're just right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like our pizza discussion is going to have to go on hold. Uh, we got a transmission from one of the field offices. Let's see what they need. Hello, Connect HQ from the great state of Montana. Now, I'm Field Officer Seth, and with me today is Mason, who's got a question for you about courage. So, go ahead, Mason. Thanks. There's this kid at school named Randy. We do not get along at all. We argue all the time. Finally, Randy said, enough talking. Let's have it out once and for all. We are set to fight after school on Friday, outside at the bus stop. And you want to know how to get the courage to tell him that you don't want to fight, right? No. I want to know how I can win the fight. Randy's bigger than me, but I think I can still take him. Fight tips, training programs, strategies, Give me whatever you got, Connect HQ. Well, um, can, can you guys help Mason out? Um, any wisdom you could send our way would be greatly appreciated. A fight? That's serious business. What Mason needs is not training tips. He needs the courage to do what's right. Agreed? Absolutely. Excellent. Mike, will you find a point link? On it. Edison, will you look for a Bible link? Yes, Captain. And Harper and I will look... Wait, where did Harper go? What's up, Harper? Just thinking. Thinking about what? About how much I'm dreading going home because I might run into my new neighbor. What's the matter? You don't like your new neighbor? No, she's great. My age, really nice. Every time I see her, she waves and says, hi, Harper. Well, she sounds great. Why are you avoiding her? Because I forgot her name. She knows my name, but I don't know hers. <laughs> then why don't you just ask her again? I can't just ask her her name? Sure you can. It just takes a little courage. Why don't you go home now and try again? Uh, no. I'm not going home until I remember her name. Why does every fight have such a strict schedule? You always hear, you, me, bus stop, three o'clock. You never hear, you, me, bus stop. Three-ish, if the weather's nice. That's a good point. And I know we want to teach this Mason kid about courage, but it sounds like he already has the courage to fight. He just wants tips on how to win. Uh, but is fighting the right thing to do? I don't know. But God does. <gasps> That's the point. God gives me courage to do what's right. <laughs> That's great. If I ask God, he shows me the right thing to do, and God gives me courage to do what's right. But you know, if fighting were the right thing to do, I could give Mason the tips he needs. Oh, really? Yeah. I've seen like every kung fu movie ever, and those guys are tough. All he needs is a little brawn. Brawn? Yeah, muscle, strength. 20 push-ups in the morning, 10 pull-ups at night, high-protein diet to build muscle fast. I'll have him fighting ready in a week. That's not what Mason needs, Mike. All he needs is brains. What? All it takes is a basic understanding of physics and geometry, leverage, force, and angular momentum. Those are the tools Mason needs. <laughs> Brains never beats Braun. I can draw up some pretty compelling diagrams to prove otherwise. Oh yeah? Well, 
I can draw up my own propelling diagrams that prove otherwise. Otherwise. Let's see whose method is best. You, me, observatory, one o'clock. Actually, can we do like a little earlier? I'm always a little sluggish after pizza. Um, 11.30? Perfect. I'll see you then. You're going down. After you. Thank you. You're welcome. Abigail? Abigail? It was like Abigail, but it wasn't Abigail. Hey, Harper, I was hoping... What is this? It's my wall of names. Since I can't remember my neighbors, I figured, why not just write all the names that aren't hers, and soon enough, I'll be left with the correct one. Uh, Harper, this idea seems a little out there. Angela! Angela? It definitely wasn't Angela. Ray, I need a better memory. You don't need a better memory. You just need a little courage. Courage to ask someone their name? It's such a little thing. Why does it even matter? Because God doesn't just want us to have courage in the big things. He also wants us to have courage in the small, everyday things. Let me teach you this Bible verse. It comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. Say it with me like this. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith. Be courageous, be strong. Be courageous, be strong. So, courage not only connects to our strength, but also our faith in Jesus? Yes, be strong in your walk with Jesus, and then you'll have the courage to do anything, when it's big or when it's little. I guess I do know the right thing to do. Now, I just need faith. To trust God will give me courage to do it. Drag coefficient, kinetic energy, and friction. Hey, Edison, how's it going? Uh, it's great. I'm making progress. Can I see? Uh, yeah. Well, this all looks very impressive, but it doesn't look like the Bible link. What Bible link? You remember, I asked you to find the Bible link for Mason. Oh, <laughs> right. Um, so I was thinking of the... Uh, the story of David and Goliath. That sounds good. Yeah, the ultimate story of brains versus brawn. What? David and Goliath isn't about brain versus brawn. It's the story of David and how he had the courage to do what was right, even when no one else did. Oh. Are you sure? <laughs> Come on. Watch this. This is the story about the God who loves us in the Bible. We find truth and purpose to love God and love others. We're searching God's word for things to discover. This book is alive, full of answers and godly advice. This book is alive. King Saul and the army of Israel were at war with their old enemies, the Philistines, again. But instead of a battle, the Philistines sent out their champion to taunt King Saul's army, the giant Goliath, who was nine feet tall. Choose one man to come over here and fight me. If he kills me, we'll be your slaves. But if I kill him, you'll be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel. Who has the courage to fight me? <laughs> Far from the battle in the town of Bethlehem lived a young man named David. His father had sent his oldest three brothers to join King Saul's army, but David stayed home to care for the family's sheep. Take this food to your brothers. 
see how they're doing, and bring me back a report of the battle. Have you seen the giant? He comes out every night to insult us. What would somebody get for killing this Philistine to stop that laughing? King Saul said he'll get a princess for his wife, and his family will never pay taxes again. Who does this sweaty Philistine think he is? No one's allowed to insult the armies of the living God. What are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be babysitting the sheep? You're just trying to watch the real men fight. Now, go on home. What have I done now? I was only asking a question. King Saul wants to see you! Don't you worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous. You can't beat him. You're just a boy and he spent his whole life training to be a soldier. I've spent my whole life training too. When wild animals came and attacked my father's sheep, I take my club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. I've killed a lion and a bear, and I'll kill this ugly Philistine who dares to insult our God. The Lord who rescued me from the lion and the bear will rescue me today too. All right, go ahead. May the Lord be with you, but wear my armor. I can't wear these. I'm not used to them. God will protect me. David walked to the creek and picked up five smooth stones. Armed with only his staff and sling, he went to face Goliath. You come at me with a stick? <laughs> you come at me with a sword and spear? I come at you in the name of the Lord of the Heaven's armies, who you have insulted. I'm going to kill you and cut off your head. Everyone gathered here will know that the Lord rescues his people. David's small stone hit Goliath smack between the eyes. This is the Lord's battle, and he always wins. You see, Goliath bullied God's people, and they were too afraid to send someone to fight. But David had the courage. Yes, and even though he was young, he could not let Goliath continue to speak against God. Because they had faith in God's power. He was the only one who had the courage to fight and God's power won. Yes, but it's not just about the fight. He had the courage to do what was right. Now in his story, they were in war, so he had to fight. But sometimes the right answer is to just walk away. We have to seek God and he'll show us what to do and give us the courage to do it. We're here. And you're here. I have something to say to you, Mike. Oh yeah? Say it. I didn't bring my diagrams. Thank goodness, neither did I. <sighs> <laughs> I, I realized that we were too focused on the brains versus brawn stuff when we were supposed to be helping Mason. You realize that too? Nope, I forgot where my diagrams are. <laughs> Mike. But you're right. And I'm glad you had the courage to speak up and do what was right. Thanks, Mike. Lacey! Lacey! Hi, Harper. Lacey! Uh-oh. So first you forget your neighbor's name, and now you've forgotten my name? Ray, her name is Lacey! Oh, okay. You remembered it. No, God gave me the courage to go to her and ask her her name. Harper, I am so proud of you. Thanks, Ray. I'm proud of me too. I put aside my embarrassment and stubbornness, and I asked God for the courage to do the right thing, and he gave it to me. And now I have a new friend. And her name is again? Lacey. <laughs> I might do a jab, jab, uppercut. Well, maybe not. <laughs> hey, hey, look, it looks like we got a uh, transmission from Connect HQ. Thank goodness. Hi, I'm Medicine. Thanks for your question. I know you wanted tips on fighting, but we found something better. The Bible tells us this in the book of 1 Corinthians. Say it with me, like this. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on guard, stand firm in the faith. Be courageous, be strong. Even when we're afraid, even when people disagree with us or make fun of us, courage is about doing what's right even though everyone else is doing what's wrong. When Goliath was bullying them, God's people were too afraid to fight. David was the only one who saw what was going on and had the courage to stand up to Goliath. Even when others tried to talk David out of doing what was right, he had faith in God's power. David had the courage to fight for God. Sometimes being courageous means not fighting. 
Today, Mike and I almost fought each other, on paper at least, to prove who had the better fighting method. It took courage to set aside our disagreement and move forward. And Harper showed courage when she set aside her embarrassment and went and asked her neighbor's name. Real courage isn't about physical strength or being super smart. It's about trusting God. Trust that God is bigger than any challenge. Remember, God gives me courage to do what's right. We just have to ask him. So I don't have any fighting tips other than to seek God. Ask him to give you the courage to see what's right and to give you the courage to do it. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. Wow, you've given me a lot to think about, Connect HQ. I need to ask God to show me what to do and to give me the courage how to do it. Thanks. I've got the power, the ultimate power. Look, look at the masses. Have you seen my beach ball? I think I left it over there. Oh, this is exhausting. Today we learned that God gives me the courage to do what's right. And for you, maybe doing what's right is making Jesus the leader of your life. All it takes is a little bit of courage and remembering your A, B, C's. A, admit. Admit that you've done wrong and ask God to forgive you for disobeying him. B, believe. Believe God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you're forgiven because Jesus made you right with God. C, choose. Choose to spend your whole life depending on God's power to help you say no to sin. As you live and love like Jesus, tell others God is the leader of your life and your number one friend. And if you want to make that decision today, be sure to talk about it with your Connect Small Group leader before you leave.